very first depiction of the cross is a piece of graffiti known as the Alexamenos Graffiti. You can go to the Palatine Hill Museum in Rome today and see it. There on a cross is a figure with the head of a donkey. And off to one side, there is a figure with his hand raised in veneration. The caption says it all. Alex Amenos worships his God. Now, it's very difficult for comedy to stand up over the years, but I think this satire is just as biting today as it was about 1900 years ago. Because what this graffiti artist was saying is that anyone who worships the God of the cross is worshiping a donkey. It is asinine, it is ridiculous, it is grotesque, it is absurd to worship somebody on a cross. And yet that is the Christian claim. And that Christian claim met the Roman Empire back in the first century. And it was like an asteroid landing on planet Earth. Think of the cross, the crucifixion. Uh, crucifixions were an implement of torture. They were a method of execution. They were the way that the empire kept the slaves in check. It was uniquely the slave's death. And this is how people were able to live safely among a throng of millions of slaves in the empire with the threat of torture and violence. You see, the ancient world was a world where there was a, an incredibly steep hierarchy of being. At the top of the hierarchy, there were the gods. At the bottom, there was the cross and those who were crucified. The, the gods at the top were terrifying beings. They were warriors. They were vagabonds. They were tricksters. They were serial rapists. In the ancient Near Eastern myths of creation and in the Greek and Roman myths of creation, the world has come from slavery and battles and chaos and death and tricksters and war. And out of that, the gods have made humanity. And in the ancient myths, the gods make humanity to be slaves for the gods, to relieve the gods of their work. Humanity are brought into being. So humanity are brought out of chaos through bloodshed and war in order to be slaves. Into this world, the cross is preached. Into this world comes an announcement, a heralding, that the God of heaven is very different to Zeus and Mars and Artemis and all the others. The God of heaven has actually descended all the way down to be with us and to be for us and to die upon that cross. The highest gods, who is so much greater than those squabbling, warring deities, has also made himself so much lower and degraded himself so much to die the shameful death of the slave. This is the Christian claim that when Christ shows up, it is the highest descending to the lowest depth in order to bring the world back to rights. It's quite the claim. And we will never understand how scandalous Christianity is unless we understand the night before Christmas. But we'll also never understand Christianity unless we keep on tracing the story until Easter, where we see this God dying upon this cross, this most high descending to this greatest depth. But if you can see all the way into that darkness, maybe you can start to see the light. Maybe you can stand alongside the Alexamenoses of this world and see on the cross a God you can really believe in. That is the argument of the night before Christmas.